Well, hey there guys, Conceptual Concept 6.9 here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest again. And I went ahead and bought a WBP Jack and 556. Um, I wanted to go ahead and give a first impressions and kind of give you the reasoning why I decided to invest in this. So I'm gonna start off with I was planning a thousand round review on my Palmetto State Armory AK-102 and it blew a casing and it's been at the gunsmith. I, I don't know how many people are completely familiar with gunsmith lead times, but a good portion of them are weeks or months backlogged. So um, I'm just having them look over everything, make sure it's good to continue firing and continue the review. and. If it is, I'll continue the thousand round review. But in my hunt for another 5.56 five, AK for under a thousand bucks, I went ahead and bought a builder's kit from Atlantic Firearms that is a WBP gun. I'll go ahead and annotate somewhere in here where the uh, picture of what it looked like prior. And I just put a bunch of hodgepodge furniture I had in a drawer in my garage on here i'll probably kit it out a little better down the road but i just wanted to put some rounds down range so let's get into the overall build quality and stuff like that and then we'll go ahead and get into shooting it um, we'll put some rounds down range give you initial thoughts on recoil all that stuff compared to the other 556 five, ak's i have so um looking over this rifle it seems to be pretty well built um it is a 14 by one left hand thread so an a cam thread pitch which you can get plenty of muzzle devices for now i have not checked concentricity yet to put, throw a can on probably will in the future so it, on those threads it has a flash hider here and it looks like it's able to accept a um, bayonet not that I really think that's important on modern rifles, but it looks like it might be a possibility right here. Although the rear bay bayonet lug is awful far back for that, but it might take a 74 bayonet. So this does sport a 45 degree gas block, very AKM-esque as well. Um, those who know 45 degree gas blocks and 45 degree cuts in the barrel for the gas port will erode the barrel a little faster well, significantly faster than a 90 degree gas block. So you might have to watch out for that, but if you get a can S piston, just tune it down a little bit, make it a little more functional. Now getting into the barrel, it is a nitride barrel. I'm hoping this barrel lasts 15,000 rounds, but we'll see exactly how, how far we go with this. It does sport standard AK hand guards. Um, one thing I did notice is this upper, the gas tube, the upper handguard section is very, very tight. Um, I was really surprised. I had to wrench on it. I actually broke a wood upper handguard I had in my garage, and I ended up just slapping this guy on here instead of trying to mismatch the wood with the polymer. So the lower handguard is very clean it's fit properly i was able to mount this handguard in just fine the handguard retainer is cut in the right spot where you're not trying to wrench this thing down um, i've seen several other ak's where the handguard retainer is cut a little further back and it makes for a tight fit which is great it's just it also requires some fitment to actually make it make it work now let's move back into the rear sight block this does look to be a mimmed part, a metal injected molded part, but this is not a high wear part either. So no big deal there. It does sport 800 meter sights. And um, one thing I'll see if I can get some close up pictures in here. But one thing I'm not a super huge fan of on this, is there's actual bare metal on the inside where the, um, where the notches for the rear sight fits. I think they had to grind it down to make it fit. Um, not a huge fan of that. I think they could have went ahead and refinished it. So there's that. The rivets do all look clean. Um, there is no, no light coming from under the rivets. So they seem to be pressed well. Um, 
it does fit a variety of magazines and we'll test that at the range as well we'll go ahead and insert a bunch of different magazines just make sure they fit all right guys so we're here at the range to do our test shots with this gun let's start by checking magazine fitment right now i have four magazines this is a um palmetto state armory ak slab side like 101 magazine that one fits this is a gen 1 zostava the gen 2 i don't think fit i don't personally own them but they don't fit in my palmetto so i doubt they fit in this but the gen 1 zostava magazine seem to hold pretty well the m90s Next would be a Bulgarian Circle 10, one of the arsenals, locks in solid. And lastly, we've got, I think this is an ATI, ACI. I'll, I'll go ahead and annotate that somewhere. But that one's a little tighter fit than the rest, but still fits. I'm only gonna do a mag today. Um, we're gonna move back to, I really do not like this bolt. Um, I don't like bare metal. However, this deserves a good rattle can anyways, don't you think? We're gonna get into something I really don't like here is the safety. Now it is an enhanced safety and if you like those rock on, but my personal opinion is this is a pretty garbage enhanced safety. So the leverage pulling it down is great. Um, you'll see it has this really large shelf here and I'd rather have a slightly smaller shelf, less chance it can catch and then another thing I don't like, and my girly baby hands might be part of this, but as you push up, this is just sheet metal, and you can see it definitely over time will start to cut into your hand. Um, there's definitely some discomfort there. If you're using it all day, I would imagine it would wear out gloves faster. And I just think that other safeties have executed this better, including as much as I hate to say it, Palmetto State Armory. Their enhanced safety, it's a longer ledge, but it's flared out less and it's angled at the right way where it's not really digging into your finger as you turn the safety back on. So I think this could have been thought out a little better. Now the extended magazine release, I've never really used one before and I've never really felt the need for it, but if you like it, it is there. So yeah, you got that. Um, past that, it does sport a AKM side rail. Um, this it looks closer to 100 series than an AKM. You'll see there's less material shaved off. That's really done for cost cutting measures, but they did that as well. Um, and really that's about it. Let's go ahead and test the trigger we can see we are safe we are safe there's no rounds in the chamber test the trigger oh that reset is abysmal so the trigger could definitely stand to be replaced but it does have a really really strong spring bringing your finger back so it does help you walk back to reset fairly easily I just think it could definitely have a shorter reset and a little less take up on the pole. Compared to other AKs, I would probably put this in C or D tier in terms of their, their, um, their triggers overall. Past that, it does have an AKM rear trunnion. Um, I did put this TDI um, buffer tube adapter on here just because it was 30 bucks. And I thought I'd try it out. I'm probably going to end up making this a much more modern AK down the road, but this is how I have it at the moment. So let's get into one thing that does show some concern to me is Lemon Grenade did comment when I posted, did a post on YouTube for this. He said the firing pins do break and he's like, you'd better buy a few, which I might have to. Um, that's definitely a concern. I'm planning to run this as my main AK for quite a while, and we'll see if that holds true. Not that I doubt Lemon Grenade at all, just my personal thing is I like to learn the hard way. I like to hurt a little bit, right? Um, the one thing I did find online with multiple firing pins broken, so definitely a little bit of evidence to suggest that, 
is that if you go with a free float firing pin instead of the spring loaded one, um, you have a less likely chance of breaking them. And I'd also like to see if they fixed the problem since then. So we're gonna go ahead and keep running this. I've got a couple free float firing pins on order. So if one breaks, I'll be able to keep this sucker running, but hopefully they fix the issue. Hopefully there's new information that might prove these to be pretty decent because this builder's kit here was 850 bucks and a stock set sets you got another 100 to 150 bucks or you can just get the gun completely kitted out for about 1100. Um, another cool thing I do want to add as well before we hit the range, they did include the grip nut. Palmetto doesn't. Um, but they did include the grip nut and an extended or a standard AK screw here, um, grip screw. So pretty cool of them to do that. They didn't have to. I actually ended up ordering one with it just because I didn't think it would come with it. Maybe I should have read the description better, but I didn't think it came with it. So I went ahead and just ordered one. I have another one for my junk drawer, so there's that. So without further ado, let's hit the range, let's see how this guy shoots, and then I'll give my final impressions afterwards, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and do some shooting. I'm gonna be running the Tula 223. Now some 5.56 five, AKs, the ones that are gassed really, really lightly, won't cycle 223 ammo. So I'm just curious if this will cycle the Russian stuff. I know Lemon Grenade had issues with his PSA AK-101. They blame the trigger. I'm not sold on PSA's excuse for that, but let's try it out. All right. We got all A zones, 228. Like I said previously, this trigger is not my favorite. Not very fast with it. Let's see if we can run up that time. As you saw, the 223 ran just fine out of here. And actually the recoil is pretty mild. Oh, I threw left. 209 though. Trigger is not my favorite. I was definitely pulling left there. I could feel it, but that's on me. Now let's try one more just for whatever shits and giggles. All in the A zone that time, 194. 194 is not a great build drill time with the rifle at low ready, but I'll take it. I'm definitely gonna install a better trigger in the near future and we'll see if we can run this thing faster. But factory trigger is usable, but definitely I would put it on the lower tier of AK trigger list. So if you get one of these, maybe plan on replacing the trigger. So the magazine release too, um, for me, I don't particularly like it and it's not because it's bad. It's just because I have so much time running a standard magazine release that when I go to reload, Let's grab this. I like to hold my second magazine like this, and I rely on feeling that flip down for me to switch magazines. So I feel that knock, and that's where I go. Well, the difficulty for me is it brings my hand lower, and I was finding myself kind of rocking it in at a weird angle that was causing some missteps. And we'll show that in the one reload ones. That is 100% a training error. It is not the fault of this. In fact, it's really well designed. I think I'll fall in love with it the more I use it. But for someone who's been using standard AK magazine releases, the length of it just threw, threw a little bit of kinks in my reloads and So how am I feeling about this gun after putting a couple mags through it? Just my initial impressions are, it shoots really smooth, really light recoil, does eat those rounds pretty far away. So I'd probably get a KNS piston and I will before my next segment of the review on this. 
really hate the safety, not used to the magazine release. So the magazine release is definitely a personal issue, but I think the safety is kind of garbage. Um, other than that, seems to be pretty good. I'll put an optic on it in the near future here. Um, I'm really used to those higher optics you've seen on my other AKs. And so that also threw a wrench in here. The way I have this set up with this stonk um, was less than ideal for me. I had trouble getting behind the iron sights and this might be excuse zone, but it was definitely noticeable when I was shooting it. But not the fault of the rifle. The rifle seems to shoot really well. Now I am going to be doing, using this almost exclusively once I'm done with my Palmetto AK-102 review. And I'll keep you updated. If any of the firing pins break, I'll make sure to do a video about it. <clears throat> so one really important note, um, I bought this hoping it would be a good replacement for my Palmetto down the road, kind of a little higher end. Um, after learning about the firing pin, did I get upset? No. Um, I'm like, well, shit, you know, this might be an issue. And it's important not to get emotionally attached to your gear. This is a tool. And if the tool cannot perform its function properly, you probably should look at it and be like, I need a different tool. So we'll be running this. I'm gonna be using this almost exclusively for all my training moving forward. Again, once the 102, keep you updated. If it runs great, I'll give it a seal of approval. If it doesn't, I'll let you know as well because I'm not gonna get butt hurt. I'm not gonna try and hide it. So past that, don't forget, Go outside, touch grass, and eat ass, all right, guys?